God, I have no idea. You know, I didn't know my dad. Because you were 11. So, um, I, I have no idea how he would have reacted. I know that he told my brothers, the boys, the boys should stay out of this business. So I don't know what that made the girl. <laughs> like, that you can go into it because you're garbage in this. Well, how no, would you raise your daughter if you had a daughter today? Especially with all of the temptations and the craziness in the world. How would you set her on course? And, and where would you tell her to sail to? Well, I, I think I would, wouldn't tell anybody to sail any direction. I think they should do what they want to do. But I also think that kids don't get involved in bad things, say drugs, for example, or bad downward spiraling things, unless they're not given any stability at home. If they're not loved and they're not given this, then they go out and they have to prove to their peer group that they also can do a lot of drugs and they also can do But I know a lot of kids that... Um, that love to go play music all day and practice the piano. And I think it's because they are, they are secure and they feel loved. And that's the only thing that I think would be the main thing I would do with a child is to make them feel secure and whatever they wanted to do would be okay. I mean, you know, even if they didn't go to Harvard, where we are right now, or, you know, they didn't become the greatest thing of anything. And I've seen a lot of friends of mine pressure their kids into telling them, you know, the way to be the best you, in this world is to have a great car, great clothes, and a great house. And how can a kid live up to that? Those are false values. They're not, instead of telling them the best thing to do in this life is to be happy in your heart and uh, by loving something or, or being loved. Or, you know, I know this is very simplistic and very uh, idealistic, but I mean, I mean a very general way. I think it's more important to be happy inside love yourself. Yeah. I don't have all that other stuff. You're going to stand up tonight and narrate <laughs> Peter and the Wolf yeah. with the Boston Pops. Do you know? I don't care how big any actor gets. They think the Pops is pretty terrific. Do you? Who are they? The Boston Pops. <laughs> I've never it's heard John of them. John Williams. Yes. I know it's John Williams. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Michael Lancaster, I think, is conducting tonight. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so tonight is for the public. Tomorrow night is, I guess, sold out. But it's mm -hmm. for the Anti-Defamation League. That's mm -hmm. a pretty special organization, mm -hmm. isn't it? Very special. What do you know about it? Well, not a lot. I mean, my, my information about them is very vague, but I um, they appeal to me because they're after the same things in a sense that they... They just want to teach people not to have prejudices and bigotry and, and everyone should be treated equally and basically don't judge a book by its cover. And I think if they can get that idea across to kids in the next generation, they could grow up having less hatred for someone with uh, another religion or another color skin or whatever it is that makes kids uh, hate. Well, you're doing your part and you're giving back and thanks to It's fun. A lot. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you too. Thanks a lot.